Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Blackmagic Fusion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this 3D particle scene, which is a development of a tutorial I made recently on the Lisa Zhu figure theme. So a Lisa Zhu figure is, as you see, this nice lattice work generated by oscillating input patterns. So if you're interested in that, I do recommend you check out my other tutorial linked to in the comments. But even if you're not interested in the mass of it, I think there's probably enough in this tutorial that, sh that should be of interest to you. So let's get started. So I've made my composition a thousand frames long. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 3D shape and I'm going to switch it to Sphere, come over to the Transform here, and I'm going to set its scale to 0 0.075. Nice small Sphere, looks like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add an expression to the X and the Z to get our pattern. So first of all, add an expression to the X. So that's going to be sine, open brackets, time, divided by 25, close brackets. And then we'll do the same to the Z. And in this one, we'll use cos, open brackets, divided by 20, close brackets. Now, if we have a look at what we've got, we've got the nice 5x4 Lissajou pattern. And you can check out my other Lissajou tutorial that I've linked to in the comments to understand the maths of this particular operation. But the interesting thing that we're going to do here is that we're going to simulate the effect of this sphere swinging from a string, which is how one would do a practical experiment for this. And to do that, we're going to modify the Y translation with an expression and we're going to come over to modifiers. So I'm going to enter an expression for number two. But first of all, actually, I want to rename this sphere as orb, which just makes it a little bit easier. So for this number two expression, I'm going to enter orb dot transform 3D op dot translate. Now what I've done is I've mapped that to a hotkey just so I don't have to type it each time. But do pay close attention to what is a capital and what is not. So I'm going to use the X value here and I'm going to multiply it by N4 for a reason I'll explain a little bit later. And then I'm going to copy that and I'm going to add an expression to number three, number in three, I should say. And this is going to be the Z translation value. I'm going to set that number in four to one for the time being. And then I'm going to come to the number in one field and I'm going to enter an expression. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the square of those two translation values. So I'm going to type open brackets N2, which is the X translation value to the power of two plus N3, which is the Z translation value again to the power of two close brackets to the power of one over two. So then if I come over to the number expression field and I type N1, it's a little bit slow to update this. And then we look at our result here. You'll see we've got this interesting basket work effect. And if I press play, you'll see that my orb is now swinging up and down as though it were attached to a piece of string suspended over the floor. So we can vary the height of that basket, as it were, by adjusting the, coming to the modifiers, and adjusting that N4 value. I think that's a little bit too high, so I'm going to go for 0.75. So now we've got a, a gentler swing, and I think that's going to be a little bit better, but it's, you can vary that to taste. So the next thing we want to do is to create a particle emitter. I'm just going to enter an expression on the number value because I don't want it to be emitting particles the whole time. So I'm going to type if, that's double I, open brackets, time is less than 640, comma, 8, comma, 0, 
close brackets. And that means that until frame 640, it will be emitting eight particles per frame and thereafter it will be emitting none. I also want to ensure that the lifespan lasts the duration of my composition, so I'm going to run into a value of a thousand for that. So let's come over to the style and we're going to select blob and just open up the size. Let's have a size of 0.04 and size variance of 0.05, just to be a bit more interesting. Okay, now let's come over to the region. So sphere is good for this, but we want to reduce that size down to 0 0.05 because we don't want this to be too wide. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add expressions to the translations so that it follows the orb. So expression on the X, I'm going to type orb and then my nice little shortcut for the translate X. And then I can copy that expression on the Y, paste that in there, use the Y value from the orb, Z expression, paste the same clipboard value and use the Z value. So then our emitter is going to be following our orb perfectly. And there's one more thing we need to do with this emitter, which is to send the particles flying downwards towards the floor. And to do that, I'm going to use the velocity. I'm going to have a velocity of 0.2 and an angle of negative 90, which is going to give me that downwards direction. And then to create the floor, I will need a particle bounce. So let's add that. We don't want any elasticity because we don't actually want them to bounce. We just want them to sit on the floor once they've reached it. So let's come over to the region and set that to rectangle. Let's have a sufficiently large width and height. Let's go for 20 by 20. And then I'm just going to rotate it through negative 90 on X. And then obviously we need to add a particle render node, so P render. Let's have a look at that. And now let's have a look at what our animation is doing. So the particles are being emitted by our swinging orb, and then they're landing nicely on the floor, and it's drawing our pattern. Now you can probably see that some particles are actually falling through the floor and I'm going to come back and fix that right at the end of this tutorial. So let's start on building the rest of the scene. Let's first of all merge our particles with our orb, which we can do like so. So now we've got a, a 3D merge with those two in it. I'm going to add a camera and then I'm going to select from the viewport here copy POV to camera one. And now our camera has got that temporary viewport view that we've set up. And let's just also add to the output of that 3D merge 3D renderer node so we can see the rendered output. And that looks like that. Then we need to add a floor. So let's add a 3D shape and let's call this floor. And let's add it to our 3D merge like that. So. Let's come over here to its transform. Let's have a nice big scale, 50, 50 by 50. And let's rotate it through negative 90 on X. And I'm just going to temporarily make it dark. I'm going to be giving this a bit of a texture later on, but I'm just going to make it something like that for the time being so we can see where we're at. Let's also add some lights. So I'm going to add a three point light. I'm going to add it that to the merge as well. Let's bring that down here. I'm going to move it out to the left on X, so negative four and up on Y, positive one. And I'm going to just turn on the lighting in our 3D renderer. And then I also want a light that follows the position of the orb. So I'm going to add another three point light. Let's maybe call this orb light. And again, let's add that to our 3D merge. So we want to position this over the orb itself. So to do that, we'll come to its transform and we'll use an expression for the X, Y, Z. So we're going to type orb and then my nice little shortcut. So transform 3D op dot translate. And I'm going to use the X for that. Copy that. Let's have an expression for the Y. Paste that in Y. Expression for the Z paste that clipboard in and then use Z for that. Now I actually want the Y 
to be a little bit higher. So I'm actually going to add after that, I'm going to add plus 0.15. And it's just going to move that up a bit more. And it's going to work a little bit better in terms of the, the look of that. So I just want to make a quick change to my 3D renderer just to make this a little bit easier for myself. I'm going to switch the renderer type to the OpenGL renderer. And then I'm going to use quick sort for the texturing there just so those particles look more appropriate when they overlap each other. And the OpenGL renderer will enable me to, to play this back a lot more easily. OK, let's do a little bit of texturing on this. I'm going to bring in a texture for the floor. So that's this cement texture here. And I'll give you a link to that in the comments. So I'm going to make a new background and I'm going to composite that over the top of that. And then I'm going to set up the background here to be 7680 by 4320. My original cement texture was 1920, 1080. Then I'm going to look at that merge and you'll see we've got a little lonely cement texture in the middle of the merge. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to Edges and I'm going to select Mirror. And you can see that's tiled up that texture very nicely with mirrored edges. And I can now use that for my floor. So first of all, let's add to the end of this merge, we'll add a blin and then we'll pipe that blin into the floor like so. So then let's adjust the diffuse color of the blin. And uh, let's go back to where we were. So basically we want to be kind of make it nice and dark. Something like that is going to be good. So let's actually look at that with the, the rest of our scene. So we've got our texture there on the floor. But what I also want to do is I want to use that texture to affect the specularity because that's going to make it look much, much nicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a luma here and I'm going to pipe the output of that merge. So on my merge over my background, pipe it into the luma here. And then I can use that for the specular intensity of the blin. So pipe that in there. So we can just adjust that luma here. So we're getting that sort of effect like that. And you can see how much better that is because we're picking up, as it were, the texture off the floor which is really apparent as we move that light. Now we do have a bit of a problem, which is that our image is being mapped onto the entire expanse of the floor. And it means that we haven't got really much detail to play with. So what I'm going to do is make a bit of space for myself here. So after the floor itself, I'm going to add a UV map tool. And also on the flow, I'm going to add another 3D camera. So I'm going to switch the UV map mode to camera, and then that gives us this input, and I can use that camera to do the mapping. So I'm going to call this uh, camera UV, just so I know what it is. And then I can adjust the position of this camera. So I'm going to go for something like negative 85 on X, so we're looking down. And move it up to around 20 on Y. And that's pretty good, actually. Uh, it depends on what we end up doing with our camera eventually, but um, you can see we can, we can shift that around using the X and Z translation. And so now we've got a lot more. If I just bypass that UV map, you can see the difference. That's, that's really looking rubbish. This is much, much nicer because we've got all that extra detail. And we're only mapping the bit of the floor that we're interested in. The rest can disappear off into the darkness. But let's just group all that just to get it out of the way. Come on, G, and that's our floor. It just gives us a bit more space to play with. So let's also think about adding some texture to the orb itself. So what I'm going to do is add a fast noise. I'm not going to get terribly fancy with this. And I can just pipe that directly into the orb itself. And you can see how that's already started to work. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the contrast. Let's go for around 2.5. And let's also increase the scale so we've got a lot more detail in there. Somewhere around there looks good. And let's also just increase the seethe rate. Let's go for 0.6 or something. And what that'll do is just gives us this sort of spiraling, twisty kind of transparent thing like that, and I think that's going to work quite well. 
So another thing I want to do is treat the orb and the particles separately from the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another 3D merge. And I'm going to use the output of that particle renderer, put that into the merge, put the orb as well into that new merge here. So we've got those on a separate merge. And then we can add another 3D renderer to that merge like so. Again, I'm going to switch to OpenGL and actually let's go for sorted accurate. That's what we really want. And then we can merge this over the top of the other 3D renderer and look at the result. What I've forgotten to do here, of course, is I've forgotten to add my camera to that. That's why it's not looking right. So I need to add my camera to that new merge. We're back to where we should be. And now it means that I can select this renderer here and, and not have it be lit. Whereas this one has got the lighting on, this one has got it off. And that means I can now apply a little bit of glow to this. And I'm going to do that by adding some blurs. So I'm going to add a blur node. And I'm going to take the output of this 3D renderer into that blur. So I'm going to set this blur value to 16. And then I'm going to copy it and paste it. I'm going to set this blur value to 32. And I'm going to set that blend value to 0.6. Again, copy, paste. This third one I'm going to set to 64 and its blend value to 0.3. So now we've got this progressive blur and we can merge it over the top of our final scene like so. And then I'm going to set the blend mode to screen. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add a color corrector after that blur. And let's just colorize this a bit, make it blue. And then let's just increase the gain as well. So we're getting this, this really quite nice effect like that. So if we bypass that, or rather we look at the merge before that, you can see how well that, that, that glow has worked, that sort of colorized glow. And what we probably also need to do is we need to come to our orb light and just make it sympathetic to that color a little bit less white, probably also that one there, I think it could do with being not not white, just keeping the feel of this scene, something like that. It's probably nicer. And also right at the end here, we're going to need to add a background node, just so we can merge over the top of that and make sure that we don't see any background where our floor disappears into the darkness. Now, I said earlier on that I would address the issue of the particles falling through the floor, and we can do that by making an adjustment to the orb's Y position. And that involves stepping into the expression that we've added to the orb. So here on the Y position, I'm going to step into that modifier there. On this number in one calculation, I'm going to add plus 0.1. And what that will do is just ensure that the, the swinging orb doesn't graze the floor and therefore send the particles through it where they intersect the floor because of their, their, their own dimension. So that should sort that problem out. So plus 0.1 on the Y offset for that expression. And the only other thing left to do is to animate the camera but I'm not going to show you how to do that because it, it involves a lot of trial and error and, and adjusting of curves and so on. And really it's all down to what you want to see when you want to see it. So I'll, I'll leave that part of it to you. So I hope that's been interesting. There's obviously a lot of different ways in which you could customize this and refine it further, but hopefully I've given you enough to, to get started with. And do check out my original tutorial on the maths of this project. So thanks very much indeed for watching.